اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ My name is Muhammad Nuruddin Lemu, Director for Research and Training at the Dawah Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust and also Director of Lotus Capital Halal Investments. In this episode, we would like to carry on with basic principles and concepts of financial literacy. In one of our last episodes, we discussed basically how to move from working for your money, where you work and money comes from employer, to you the employee, in other words, income from work goes straight into your own expenditure and liabilities where you are working for money and if you stop working the money stops coming. How do you move from that to a situation where while you are working you are saving and while you are saving you are investing in assets. Assets are things that bring money into your pocket. Remember liabilities are things that take money out of your pocket. And the idea is that an increasing percent, some bonus you are not expecting, some amount you are expecting, uh, but gradually you are able to save more, increase your investment in assets, things that bring in money, not increase your uh, investment in liabilities, not buy another television, that's a liability. Why? It's going to just chop more of your electricity. Not buy a new phone if you don't need a new phone. So buy things that you know can help bring money into your pocket so that the money coming from there gradually increases and becomes more over time than the money you are making from where you work. Therefore, you are hoping over time your assets will be able to take care of your financial needs, not your job. Because then you are freer to spend your life doing whatever you feel is the best utilization of the time and risk and gifts that Allah has given you. Whether it is helping people in one way, contributing, serving society better, all up to you. There was an elderly man who was living in a village. He lived in a village with his son and he taught his son hard work and said, son, go to town, go and work, so that you can come back and take care of us. The son knew his father was very religious, and said, inshallah, I'll do my best. On the way, it was quite a distance. Nightfall came, and he decided to go and rest under a tree for the night. He heard the sound of something coming. There was a full moon so he could see quite well. And he noticed that there was a wolf, you know, like hyena, that was stumbling and bumping into trees and falling. And he looked carefully. And that's when he noticed that this wolf was blind. But then in the background he heard the sound of a lion coming and he got scared. So he climbed a tree high up. But then he noticed the lion coming in the direction of the wolf and he felt, ah, this wolf is dead. But as the lion got closer, he noticed that the lion was carrying something in his mouth. The lion had caught a rabbit. And the lion came and dropped the rabbit in front of the blind wolf. The blind wolf ate and the lion went away. This young man was just saying, Ikon Allah, Masha Allah, oh, see how Allah takes care of his own. By the next morning, the boy decided to go back home. And he went and told his dad, Dad, Wallahi, if we are able to just trust in Allah, Allah will take care of everything. No need to go to town, no need to go and work. Just trust in Allah. I saw how Allah got a lion to bring food for free to a wolf. 
if we trust in Allah enough, Allah will take care of us the way he took care of the wolf. The father looked and thought and said to himself, My son, I didn't send you to town to go and be a wolf. I am sending you to town to go and be a lion. So if there's any lesson you are going to learn from that story, the father told his son, is not that, oh, Allah wants you to be like the wolf waiting for the lion. No. The lesson you should learn is Allah wants you to be like the lion taking care of the blind wolf. So when we come to this subject of financial literacy, yes, we appreciate Allah takes care of everything. We have a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever does things the way Allah wants, Allah will take care of them the way he takes care of the birds. They leave their nests in the morning hungry. You know, they leave their homes, they leave their nests in the morning hungry and they return in the evening satisfied. Allah has taken care of them. But we have to remember, Allah took care of the bird not by the bird staying in its nest. The bird had to invest the effort in going out, searching, risking its life. However, at the end of the day, the bird is able to come back home satisfied and even able to take care of its own young. When we look at the subject of financial literacy, I would like to share another story from which I hope we will get some lessons. Different ethnic groups in Nigeria, you have major ethnic groups like the Hausa, Fulani, uh, Igbos, Yorubas. Of course, my own uh, ethnic background is Nupe. You've got many other ethnic backgrounds that have different ways of ensuring greater financial security, that have various financial strategies for taking care of their own. And I'd like to share with you one from the Fulani side. For Igbos, for example, and we will look at that some other time, they have a system where you work in a shop or in a business for some years, and after you have learned everything to do with the market chain of that business. You've worked in the supply side, you've worked in the cashier side, you've worked in the security side, you've worked in the store, you've worked in everything to do with the business. You've learned your thing. Gradually, you get settled and you are able to open your own or start as a partner and then gradually open your own. When we look at other ethnic groups within the Yoruba system, there's a system of guilds where in a craft, whether it's a vulcanizer or a mechanic or whatever, similar to the Igbos, you go, you spend time working, you get better, better, gradually you then get settled and uh, establish your own. Hausas have their own with uh, shops and agriculture, with goats and sheep. But the one I'd like to share is the common system used by the Fulani. It's very simple, very straightforward, but I think we will learn some principles that would be useful to us in our modern society. When a Fulani man, the nomadic Fulani, when his wife delivers, he buys a chicken for the child. Okay? He's not very wealthy. Most Fulani settlements require a minimum of 15 cows to take care of their needs. So when we look at the strategy of the Fulani, if he is wealthy enough, he will buy a chicken. If he is not wealthy enough to even buy a chicken for his son or his daughter, he will use the money to buy eggs. That egg or eggs, he will put under a chicken. They will hatch. And those chickens, 
He started with eggs. Those 21 days later, the eggs have hatched. Those chickens are for his son. He doesn't eat them. He doesn't touch them. Over the next couple of years, those chickens will grow, will hatch, will grow, will hatch. Snake will take some. Hawk will take some. Some will die of disease. Some will survive. Survival of the fittest. But gradually, over the next two to three years, he will have about 30 to 40 chickens. He will then sell most, not all, most of his chickens and he is able to buy a goat or two. As soon as they are, he has enough chickens to buy a goat, he will buy a goat. And that goat will grow. He will buy a female, what they call a nanny goat. He will buy a goat. After a while, he will, you, five years later, six years later, one goat has become two, two have become three, four, five, six. He will sell the goats. Keep one, maybe two. But use that money to buy a cow. Sometimes a young female cow, maraka, just a, fem a young calf. But over the next few years, that calf or cow that he bought will grow. A cow delivers every year and a half. After one and a half years, when the cow is now around, say, four years old, every one and a half years, it delivers approximately one cow. Remember, he has not sold all his chickens. His chickens continue to increase, and he will sell some chickens and buy a goat. He didn't sell all his goats. His goats continue to increase, and he will sell and buy a cow. And that's how he continues to have more and more cows, but he didn't put everything in cows. He didn't put everything in goats. He didn't put everything in chickens. He has multiple sources of income as his wealth is growing. And by the time our children are finishing university, children that are born at the same time with this Fulani boy, the Fulani boy has already set up his own family, has enough cattle to take care of himself with backup. In case of disease, in case of people stealing, he has backup, not just in form of cattle, but in form of goats and in form of chickens. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we will look at this Fulani family financial strategy and see what lessons we can pick from that as basic concepts in financial literacy that would be useful for us. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back. We will carry on with what we started earlier, looking at the Fulani financial literacy strategy used by the nomadic Fulani, whereby briefly, eggs are over the years turned into a herd of cattle. When you see an egg, and I see an egg, I see breakfast. I see 30 naira or 40 naira fried egg or omelette. When the Fulani man, this rural Fulani man, nomadic Fulani, sees an egg, he sees what, if managed well, can be turned into financial security. That this egg, if managed, can become a chicken. And if the chickens are managed well, they can become a goat. And if the goats are managed well, they can become a cow. And if a cow is managed well, you can get a herd of cattle. And if that herd of cattle is managed well, you have your financial security and sustainable livelihood security. This is a system that is used by Fulanis for their sons and their daughters. But lesson number one to distinguish between income and capital. The difference between income and capital. When you look at that egg, 
if what you see is just an egg breakfast, then you are looking at the egg with the eyes of income. If, however, you look at that egg and you see a cow, then you are looking at the egg with the eyes that see capital. In other words, this is not something to consume. This is something to manage in such a way that a 30 naira egg can be turned into a 1,000 naira chicken. And a 1,000 naira chicken, if managed well, can be turned into a 25,000 naira goat. And a 25,000 naira goat, if managed well, can be turned into a 100,000 naira cow. And if managed well, can be turned into a 10 million naira herd of cattle. But not just that. We realize that the Fulani, so number one, to look at things with the eyes of capital, not always with the eyes of income. 30 naira egg can just disappear in 30 minutes in breakfast. Manage differently, 30 naira. You know, people say, oh, we don't have capital to start anything. Somebody knows what to do with 30 naira's worth of a commodity and is able over time. Yes, it takes time, but you get there eventually, inshallah. So, first, don't look at the money that is coming your way as all income to be spent. Look at it as capital to be invested. Something that you can manage in such a way that it can grow. The other thing we learn from the Fulani is the power of small. Most people say, I, ca I don't have enough money, I don't have enough capital. When you say, how much do you have? I only have 1,000 Naira. I only have 10,000 Naira. I only have 50,000 Naira. It's not enough to start anything. Somebody is able to start with something small and all you ask is, can I convert this small thing into something bigger than when we started. That's all. Can 30 Naira be turned over time to become 50 Naira? Can 3,000 Naira be turned over time to become 4 or 5,000 Naira? And over time, can 5,000 Naira be turned into 10,000 Naira? And over time, 10,000 Naira to be turned into something bigger? That is really what matters. That you start now. Start small. The Prophet ﷺ said, The deeds most loved by Allah are those done regularly, even if they are small. So let us not belittle what is small. What is small is even good to start with. Why? Because there is no way. I shouldn't say so. But it is very difficult to go into business without making loss. It is better you make loss with small money, you learn your lessons, then instead of, so you start with 10,000 Naira, you make your mistakes, then you made some very silly mistakes with 100,000 Naira or a million Naira. If you have never done business before, please don't say, I'm waiting, I'll go and get a loan of 1 million Naira, 5 million naira from the government. Oh, government is even giving up to 3 million. Let me go and take it and go into business. Do you have something smaller you can start with? You will learn. Just as somebody learning to ride a bicycle. You will fall a couple of times. But then gradually you will learn balance. It's when you have learned balance. Then you now say, let's get a more expensive bicycle. Why? Because falling on a bicycle can damage the bicycle. It's better you make your mistakes with so small money than you go and learn the same lessons with bigger money. And what is worse? Other people's money. That is one of the worst things you can ever have in your custody. OPM. Other people's money. It is better you start with your own, pay your own school fees. What is that school fees? The amount you lost while doing business. Why? Because it is the money you spend to learn the lessons of how to make sure, as the Prophet said, you don't get bitten twice from the same hole. 
So learn your lessons. Start small. Like the Fulani, he started with an egg. But he managed it over time. He needed discipline. He needed discipline. So he started small, but he started. One of the things we notice with the Fulani is how he used an egg to get a chicken. But how he stayed with chickens until chickens reached the value of 20, 30,000 naira. So even though one chicken might be 500 naira, 1,000 naira, depending on the size, he built what is called a financial dam. He didn't say, because I can't buy a goat, I won't do anything. No. He managed chickens until he was good with chickens. And chickens continued to increase in their numbers and sizes until now he has got enough to go to the next level. Goats. And he is managing goats. He has not managed goats before, but he probably saw how his dad was managing it. He learned from others. He had mentors, and so should we when we are in any form of business. So as we are managing things, just like the Fulani, try and build a financial dam. Try and build a financial dam. By which we mean, have some way of saving value, saving money. The money is not sitting in the form of cash. It's sitting in the form of chickens or goats. But it is growing. So just like a dam, when they want a dam to turn turbines to generate electricity, if you are to just leave your river flowing and you want to put turbines there, in the rainy season when it comes, it will turn the turbines during the floods. After that, the turbines will stop because the flood, the water is not strong enough to turn the turbines. But what do they do? They build a dam. The dam piles water behind it. Accrues all this water. Now you have enough water there such that when you open the gates of the dam, when you open the water to move to the turbines, the water comes with enough force to generate electricity all the year round. So similarly, build a financial dam. And we see the Fulani doing that with chickens. He had one chicken, then two, then three, then six, then eight, then increasing. He's building a financial dam. And now he's able to turn the turbines and buy a goat. And the goat starts to increase. One, two, three, six, ten. After a while, he is now ready to turn the turbines and generate a cow. And gradually, he reaches his goals of financial safety, sustainability, financial security. He didn't put his eggs in one basket. He diversified. He diversified his sources of income. He had multiple streams of income. So he didn't put all his eggs in one basket. Everything is cows. Everything is this. No, he had his eyes on cows. Cows are his major source. He will keep an eye on that basket. But he shared his investment so that he always, if Disease kills the chickens, alhamdulillah, he has some goats. If disease kills this, alhamdulillah, he has something else. So important lesson to learn multiple streams of income. Build a dam and diversify your sources of income. Don't put your eggs in one basket. And if you put your eggs in a particular basket, watch that basket. The Fulani man delayed gratification. He didn't start celebrating the moment he had many chickens or oh, yeah, let's start eating. No, he had the discipline to allow the dam to move to the next level. Many of us, the moment we have up to 10 goats, okay, we will celebrate with goat number 10. Be very careful about instant gratification. Learn to delay gratification. As you are managing a business, watch your investment. There is nothing better than personal supervision. Take personal responsibility. That's what the Fulani does. It's not an issue of I've left it with somebody one day. No. However much you want to trust, have a verification system. So one other lesson. Trust, but verify. You can trust people. But please have a verification that makes sure your trust is smart and not folly. That it's not stupid 
trust. Invest in the next generation. The Fulani man started with an egg, but he wanted to make sure his children were financially safe. And probably these children will grow with herds of cattle that make sure that when they have their children, they don't have to start with egg or chicken. No, they can even start with a cow for their children. That the wealth of a family, the nuclear family, the extended family, that the family gets wealthier. So please aim high. Aim high. Not just for yourself, but even for your children. And lastly, start now. Plan now, act now. This is not when you start thinking too much. Uh, no. Any opportunity, take advantage of that opportunity. This brings us to the end of this episode. The key lessons there from the financial literacy system of the Fulani is delayed gratification. Build a dam. Start now. Start small. Have self-discipline. And remember, if you can learn and put these lessons into practice, you trust but you verify, you are also able to turn something that is the value of an egg into the value of a herd of cattle. May Allah make it easy for us. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you.